So making Docker actually work, um, for real. How do we do it? Well, uh, first uh, I should deliver a warning to you all. Uh, containers are in a really interesting place at this point in time uh, in that they're like kind of broken. Uh, I would highly not recommend using containers for big production sites uh, if you do not have the agility to switch to another container format later in time. Uh, earlier this week, actually, uh, there is a open container standard started to be developed. Uh, but that means that using Docker right now, there is a fairly good chance that you will have to redo everything uh, in a few months' time. So with that in mind, if you don't feel like entering a world of pain, uh, we shall proceed. So most movements have some sort of like unifying document uh, that makes everything tie together. Uh, for containerization, this is the data center as a computer. Uh, I'm even going to try to pronounce those names. Or actually, maybe I am. No, I'm not. Um, yeah, no. Uh, this, uh, these guys, uh, a couple of Google guys, they published this paper in 2009 arguing that uh, we can't think of a data center as a collection of computers, but as a single computer somehow. Uh, let's take a look at the abstract. Uh, it looks like this. Very nice abstract. Uh, but let's zoom in on that first sentence here. We've got a combination, or a, as computation continues to move into the cloud, the computing platform of interest is no longer resembles a pizza box or a refrigerator, but a warehouse full of computers. Uh, so when you give up on an analogy that fast, you know something is up. <laughs> uh, I propose an alternative to this document. Um, but uh, this is an excerpt from an article called uh, do frameworks have a future in, or do frameworks have a place in web development future? Also written in 2009. Now you might be thinking, of course they do. What is he talking about? And you would be right. But uh, this is one of those things that's like so wrong that it's right. Uh, that's like uh, Shrek, uh, Troll 2, uh, Star Wars, uh, and this talk. Uh, now this talks about uh, uh, these Django developer or this Django developer said that. Um, we need to start thinking of not as we, we transition from web pages to web applications, and now we need to move to quote unquote holistic websites. Um, what does that mean? I don't really know, uh, but I'm going to try to tell you anyway. Uh, so the first line of an article is, of this article is an invaluable truism. Let's face it, web development sucks. Uh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, so to aid with this painful process, uh, I've developed a model of web development that I call the turd model of web development. This is the way it looks. <laughs> this is web development. Uh, it's a turd, but if you look closely at a turd in real life rather than this emoji, uh, a turd is actually made up of, of smaller turds. <laughs> uh, and the traditional way that you separated out these turds was you would have each one in a VM. A VM is like this fully featured pedestal with like this little turd on top. You know, it, it's pretty heavy weight. Uh, I'm not sure why you'd want to do that. Uh, well, actually, I do know why you want to do that, but you're wrong. Uh, the way Docker thinks is like, okay, we can shrink this down and make this some like artful-looking turd exhibition with lots of much smaller pedestals for our turds. Uh, the problem with this is these are all on the same level. There's no hierarchy here. You know, how do we know uh, which part of these turds contribute to what part of our application, or how do these turds form an application together? Because obviously our application is going to be more than just one turd. In other words, how do we make our application look like this? Well, that is why I would like to introduce an addendum to this model called turd bento, uh, in which each turd is <laughs> like this boxed lunch uh, with uh, your containers, being the turds, uh, and some tools and persistent data uh, accompanying that. Uh, here's another problem with this. Uh, Docker's original model, that is, is that you end up with these like tangled mess of Docker run commands a mile long. Uh, why aren't volumes persistent? Why aren't ports persistent? Why aren't links persistent? This makes no sense. Uh, you just, uh, it's awful. So this is how Docker should work. You've got the box representing your application, and then each individual part of the application all links together. You can bring this up together. You can bring it down together. Why can't you do this by default? I don't know, but you should be able to. Uh, so here's one application. You've got another application. Six containers, but two applications. By default, in Docker, this would just be six containers just sitting around. You have no idea how to organize this stuff. Well, how can we do it? There's a tool called fig. Well, there was this tool called fig. It's called Docker Compose now. Um, 
it's orchestration for Docker. Uh, it defines applications out of multiple containers, and it builds multiple containers at once into one application and links them all together persistently, which is super nice. It's the way Docker should be. Uh, this is what a fig file looks like. It's YAML. Very easy to read, very easy to write. Um, it defines at the top, you've got your, the name of your application, um, you know, all the Docker run settings that normally you'd type in a command line, have to save in a shell script or something like that. It's all in the file. You just do one command and it loads it all and does the commands for you. Uh, the way it looks uh, is over there on the right, you've got the cylinders are persistent data. Uh, those are your containers, obviously. The arrows are links. Uh, and all you, have, you don't have to remember any of this stuff or put it in a shell script. Very, very nice. Wow, that was easy. Um, just use Docker Compose. Uh, well, one, one question was uh, the subcollections for each one of those just a regular doc file with a slightly different format, but the parameters are the same. Sorry. The section like under N Nginx. Yeah, yeah. Does that section basically mimic a Docker file? Uh, no, these are uh, each of these Nginx right here, Redis right here, and PHP right here. These are all Docker things, uh, and there's a Docker file in here. Um, I'll actually get to like the more detail layout. Like each of these is a Docker container, so there are three Docker files right, here. Right, right. That's what I was yeah, this, this is in addition to each container's Docker file that ties all the containers together. Uh, source control is a very good thing. So you should put your containers in version control. Just do it. Um, this is really nice. You don't have to use configuration management anymore, uh, at least for your container stuff. If you put Ansible in Docker, I will murder you. Um, but so yeah, as actually. As this guy was asking right now, uh, this is what a Docker Compose app layout looks like. Uh, you have, uh, aside from your Docker Compose file at the root of the directory, which I just realized I should put in there, uh, you have Nginx, this one, it's got a Docker file, it's got persistent data, which usually holds the site's code, and a config folder, which I like to copy uh, into the uh, Nginx container at build time. Um, uh, keep in mind that Docker Compose doesn't say you have to do this. This is just what I like to do because it doesn't say what you have to do at all. Um, so it's a good idea to like have some sort of idea so your, all your Docker Compose applications sort of look the same. Uh, same down here, a Docker file for your MySQL container. Uh, your persistent database lives in data. It's got a MySQL config, PHP, same story. This is my opinion. Docker Hub exists. Uh, there's no good reason to use it over Git. I mean, you can. If you're a big company that is shipping like Redis, uh, your Ruby, or some stuff like that, uh, it's nice to have your stuff on Docker Hub so that you can just do uh, from Ruby or whatever in your Docker file. But if it's just like you and a, and a couple of your friends, I don't see really any good reason to do it. Um, it just makes things complicated, especially considering you can put a uh, whole container or whole uh, Docker Compose applications on GitHub, and Docker Hub only supports single containers. <sighs> because Docker Core only supports single containers. Uh, this speaks for itself. Uh, you can upload images to Docker Hub without a consistent Docker file. That is, you like mess around with it and do docker commit, which is a command that should never, ever, ever be run, uh, and put that on Docker Hub. I don't, don't do that. Uh, the Docker Git workflow looks something like this. It'll be very recognizable if you use Git on your application. Master stable, you have a staging branch. Feature branches that you merge into staging. You pull on the staging server to test. You merge that into master, pull on the production server. The guarantee Docker gives us, most of the time, uh, is that it'll work exactly on production as it does everywhere else. So you can test on staging, and since you know, uh, aside from weird bugs, your configuration is going to be exactly the same on production as it is on staging. So your configuration lives in Docker. First proxies. The question of the day is this. Uh, how can you run multiple web applications on one server? Because only one container gets port 80. And this, at this point in the run right of the talk, this is what I realized uh, what uh, that person meant when they said holistic web sites, uh, is that you can have multiple fig uh, or Docker Compose applications, uh, but those are all like one application. Altogether, they make up a web site, right? No, it, you either get it or you don't. <laughs> in other words, what if we want to have multiple paths uh, route to different Docker applications because maybe our website lives on different backends and we all want to run this on the same uh, IP address or the same uh, host system. This is what our configuration looks like right now. It doesn't work. Why? Because we've got two things pointing to the cloud. We can never do that. Now we only have one thing pointing to the cloud. We've got a single uh, container application on which only Nginx lives and it decides 
which container or which application to route to, uh, depending on the path or what have you. There's a configuration. It's very, very easy. Uh, the proxy looks like this. Uh, you pass the proxy. Uh, application looks like uh, on the application side, you do the stuff where you set the things to make sure that everything you know works and your logs say the right IP address and all that stuff. Uh, high availability reverse proxy stuff just applied to Docker. Let's take a look at how this works. So, oh, I should mirror that. There we go. Cool. Uh, so, this is a test application that I made uh, a while ago. It looks like this. Uh, same stuff I showed in the slides. You've got your Nginx uh, with all its configurations. This is the site code that lives in data in a Docker file. Same story for PHP, same story for Redis. Data holds a persistent database. Cool. Let's build it. Oops. Hey, there we go. Wow, that was fast. That's because I did it this morning and it's cached. <laughs> Let's go to it. 7 auto. Ah, I can't type. There we go. Wow, that didn't work. Why? Uh, I forgot to start it. <laughs> so what this did just now is it spun up all of our containers all at once, and it's attached to the console. You can detach from the console thusly. And it stays running in the background. Boom. Let's try that again. Hey, Nginx welcome page. If we go to our thingy, it counts refreshes. This is a high scalability web app. <laughs> wow, that was awesome. So let's uh, actually deploy this. Oh, there we go. Uh, I already cloned it because I didn't feel like having to deal with copying, pasting, and then we'll talk. Uh, as you can see, same stuff. Let's get poll just to make sure. Yep, it's up to date with GitHub. Oh, I should mention this is on GitHub. Uh, yes, yes, that's me. Um, there it is, wow. So there's our code on GitHub. Literally everything is here except for the persistent database, because uh, don't put that on Git, obviously. Uh, let's build it. Wow, that was fast. Spin it up. Boop, 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 boop. Hey, that looks about right. What was the domain for this? That's, that's what it was. Same thing. Oh, no, I can't type. At all. There we go. Hey, look. I already tested this whole bunch this morning, so the counter's already at 48. I was really nervous. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Uh, that worked really well. Uh, but, oh look, uh, because I don't know how HTML works, our header doesn't have a break after it. So uh, let's just do the proper fix and get rid of that entirely. Uh, ba -ba -ba -da. Look at that. See, look at me. I, who does this? Instead of putting a BR there, I'm really salty about it, so I'm just going to delete it. I know how to use Vim. There you go. Uh, delete salt. Push it up. Kill it. I should have detached actually, you know, high availability. Ah, uh, that's Redis, not wanting to quit because Redis. Don't worry. If we just pull, hey, and build, and start it up again. Wow, it's gone. Thank goodness. Um, so yeah, that's how that works. 
uh, you can apply this, obviously, to much, much more complex web applications uh, if you so choose. Um, and uh, it's a really good way of breaking out Docker containers uh, into uh, applications. Back to slides. They are. So uh, what's next for Docker? Uh, one of the options is no. Uh, there is no next for Docker. Um, you have Rocket, Jetpack, uh, even Systemd has one, nSpawn. Uh, so there's a very good chance that you can use containers right now uh, on your PC because it probably has systemd. Oh, wait, I'm at a conference with people with Macs. Um, if you have a Linux machine, there's a very good chance you can use containers right now uh, with systemd and spawn. Uh, as I mentioned uh, at the start of this week, uh, there are people working on a standardized container format. Uh, hopefully that will be good. Um, uh, it also means that you're probably going to have to redo everything at some point. Um, but there is one thing to think about, and that thing is security. Uh, Docker's built-in networking sucks it, a lot. Um, let me explain why. I was just going to have you take my word for this side so of extra time, so I did a demo. I shouldn't have done that. Should be detached. I'm going to force kill it. Uh, Docker compose up dash D detaches as soon as it starts. Boom. Ah, I just spoiled it. See, look, there's a thing called exploit in here. See? Oh, LSD. <laughs> exploit. Uh, wow, what is this? Let's take a look. It is a single container application containing only Redis. For what possible purpose, purpose could this exist? Well, let me show you. So we started that up. Let's detach. Docker debugging tip. Uh, if you want to get shell, which Docker says, no, you should never need to get shell. Well, obviously, sometimes we need to get shell. You do that. Docker exec-it container bash gives you shell. Uh, since we have Redis in this, we can do Redis CLI. Wow, that's our server. Why would we want that? Well, let me tell you. We don't. Uh, but wait a second here. What the hell is this? That's not our IP address. Oh, I did that wrong. I don't know what I'm going to So that's not, oh, shit. That's not the right one. Maybe it's that. No. That? Aha! What have we found here? Oh, no. We have just broken the sandbox, right? Yes, I've just demonstrated to you all how I am such a lead hacker. Uh, if you look. Our IP address is uh, 172.17.0.48. Uh, but since Docker doesn't understand uh, containers are grouped into application, uh, applications, it gives all containers the same 16. <sighs> yeah. Um, so all we have to do is poke around a bit, and now we're connected to the Redis thing that holds uh, our other site from our completely separate container. So again, <laughs> the weakest leak in your chain uh, still breaks the chain here. Not really improved much in terms of security. How do we fix this? Well, I wish I could tell you. Um, that is a, a topic of a talk uh, unto itself. Uh, and people have written talks about this uh, multiple times. Uh, people have done weird things with like tying Docker into OpenVPN at the start. So uh, completely eschewing Docker's built-in networking, which is a very good idea. Um, people have done uh, handling this at the switch level, where you have each group live on a VLAN. So yeah, that's the state of things right now. Um, it's a mess. So keep this in mind. Uh, one thing, if somebody tries to tell you to do this, run and never stop running. Uh, this is called too much redundancy. Uh, VMs living in VMs with containers inside, just don't do that. Um, it is, it is surely the easiest way, arguably, uh, but it is also the worst. Try this instead. Uh, just type that or something. Um, I should shorten that. Um, this is a thing about uh, Docker multi-host networking, uh, which in addition to telling you how to serve containers across multiple hosts, which Docker still does not support in core for some reason, uh, it also shows you how to uh, roll your own networking and separate things out, uh, which is 
kind of essential considering we just cross container boundaries uh, into our Redis instance from a separate application group. Um, surely. So uh, the final thoughts here. Uh, use fig uh, to group containers together to form an application. Uh, Dr. Propose. I'm actually still in the habit of practice to talk too many times with fig. Um, put your apps in Git. Do it. Uh, Git is your configuration management, and that is very, very nice. Uh, no more screwing around with Chef or anything like that, except for the host machines. Sorry. Um, you can use a proxy container to share HTTP ports, uh, and don't trust Docker security at all. Uh, one bullet that should be there is uh, don't do this yet. Uh, wait for the standardized container thing to, before you move production, probably, unless you're like really adventurous and super agile. This is my contact info for your, so you can tell your HR people who never to hire. Uh, <laughs> that is me, that's my email, that's my key base, that's my GitHub. On the inner tubes, I go by Dark Engine, that's my website. If you have any questions, uh, thank you very much. Thank you.